Hello, everybody. Turn your King James Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 31. This is going to be the Song of Moses. Verse 1. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am an hundred and twenty years old this day. A hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. See, Moses had sinned. God had promised him he'd see the promised land, and he did. He saw it from afar. But he says, you're not going in. And besides, 120 years, he's 120 years old. Now, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, before the flood, people lived a long, long time. But after the flood, God put a limit on our lifespan. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So here it is. Moses lived to as long as the Lord had given him mankind for a lifespan. You, know, you may not make it to 120, but that's pretty much the, uh, the maximum, according to the Bible anyways, that I believe. All right, so in verse 3, Moses says this, The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee. What nations? The Canaanites, the Philistines. The, uh, the giants. That's why God destroyed the flood in Genesis 6. The giants. And people, uh, you know, most of these so-called church ministers today, preachers, what have you, they want you to think the giants came from believers marrying unbelievers. And then they had six fingers and six toes, and then God told Israel to exterminate them all. Yeah, every time an unbeliever and a believer gets married, they have a giant with six fingers and six toes, right? That's the kind of garbage they're teaching in churches today. And you wonder why gay marriage has been sanctified by the governments. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee. And thou shalt possess them, and Joshua... He shall go over before thee as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. Who destroyed uh, the kings of the Amorites and the land? The Lord did. Because they were not of his planting. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus speaking, 15 and verse 11, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. You know, eating pig doesn't defile you. It's not healthy, but it doesn't defile you. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? And who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees are a denomination of Jews. They were the religious leaders of their day. The rabbis. Knowest thou that the, ra the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered, Who's he, Jesus? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Hmm. But I thought God planted every plant. Well, sort of. 
God created the angels, even the fallen ones, and God created Adam kind. But he didn't create them to be mated together. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Uh, God's going to weed his garden. Verse 14, Jesus speaking, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So, back to Deuteronomy 31, verse 4. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, king of the Amorites, and unto the unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. You know, King David, when he was getting ready to face Goliath, you better believe he knew these words. I mean, everybody else in Israel, you know, King Saul and all the rest, they were all afraid of, of Goliath. Not David. David's like, oh, pfft, I'm not going to, you know, God's going to fight this guy, not us. Come on, guys, you know. He knew when he slung that, that rock, he knew exactly where it was going to go. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, be there, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, now, people, the Levites were the tribe that had an everlasting covenant with the Lord to serve the Lord. They were the carry the Ark of the Covenant. They were the, Moses was a Levite. Aaron was a Levite. Samuel was a Levite. They were all of the tribe of Levi. They were the tribes, the tribe that carried the, the priesthood. They were the serve the Lord. That's what the tithe was to before the you know the 11 tribes would support the one tribe the tribe of Levi they were not given an inheritance of land they couldn't grow their own food they were dependent upon the other tribes giving their tithe the other tribes giving their 10% tithe tribe and tithe that's you know never mind the tithe was not for a bunch of preachers, unless they can prove their lineage to the tribe of Levi. The tithe, is a, the tithe, modern day tithe, is a lie, in my opinion. If you want to give an offering, that's different. An offering is an offering. If you want to give them 10%, that's fine. If you want to give them 15%, that's fine. That's up to you. It's an offering, it's a gift. When a preacher gets up there and tells you to tithe, you see his lips moving, you know he's lying. So, Levites. Verse 10, And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, 
when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and Fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. Now, I should make a point. There were different types of laws in the Bible. You had the laws of blood sacrifice. They were the temple laws. When Christ said it is finished, that was paid in full by the blood of Christ. Those laws were indeed nailed to the cross. But then you had the moral laws, the Ten Commandments. Were they nailed to the cross? Is it okay now to murder? Is it okay to cheat, cheat on your neighbor with his wife or her husband or whatever the case may be? Um, no. Jesus took the Ten Commandments and broke it down to the Two Commandments. The two great commandments, love the Lord, love thy neighbor. But there's also other laws in the Bible. There were the agricultural laws. Did you know that there was a whole bunch of agricultural laws that if you follow them and you're a farmer, you'll have, your crops will grow? The Bible said not to have diverse or many different plants in your field. Well, you know, it's not a good idea to have your carrots pollinating your strawberries and to have your strawberries pollinating your potatoes. Guess what? The next year, when you go to plant your seed crops, nothing grows. Why? The seeds don't sprout because they were pollinated with the wrong thing. You got to pollinate potatoes with potatoes Strawberries with strawberries, carrots with carrots, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, uh, did you know hand washing and running water? Did you know that was a law of God? Did you know that covering human waste with sand was a biblical law? It's a good idea. It keeps the flies from gathering. You know what they used to do in England? They used to just go in a pot and throw it out the window in the morning. And you wonder why there were so many diseases back in the old days. Well, you know, there's health and diet laws. And then, you know, so you got to distinguish between the laws. Uh, let's see, the king, the kings also had a set of laws. They were the ones, the civil rulers, they were the ones that were commanded to put murderers to death. And if we followed these laws, we wouldn't be having 10 to 15,000 murders in the United States every year. Matter of fact, in 1960, do you know that there was less than 1,000 murders in the entire United States? But that was back in the days when I was a child. Leave it to Beaver. Um... Mayberry, you know, Sheriff Andy Taylor, Andy Griffin, the Andy Griffin Show. What can I tell you? America was uh, lily white back in them days. We didn't have the third world immigration problem that they do now, which was a curse, believe it or not. It's a curse. You want to read... Some of the curses that God is bringing upon America, that God promised upon Israel. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Oh yeah, you should read this. This is absolutely unbelievable. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get thee up, shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. 
And if you don't know who the stranger is, take a look at the banks in Wall Street. They are strangers to America. They wander from country to country to country. Their God is money. Verse 44. The stranger, this is who they're talking about. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. And guess what comes out underneath the tail, people? We're the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Wow. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be, a, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed, or children, forever. How long is forever, people? Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Who's sending them against thee? The Lord. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Isn't that what's happening in the Europe and America? The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Tongue is language, people. Do we have a bunch of nations here whose language we can't understand? I tell you, I go to Miami, it's a third world country. I can't, I can't even understand what they're saying to each other. They refuse to even speak English. It's the same. Chicago, New York, Los Angeles. Last time I was in Los Angeles, I turned on the radio. There were more Spanish stations than there were English stations. And that was 20-something years ago. What is it now? The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, kind is old English for cattle, or flocks of thy sheep until he hath destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all the land which Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Are we eating our own bodies. Do you know they were taking the abortion clinic remains and selling them to hog farms? And the hogs were eating them. And then you have bacon for breakfast. Think about that. Deuteronomy 28:53, the word of God fulfilled. 
And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Why am I reading this? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 31. Let's take a look. Oh, uh, where were we? Okay, back to Deuteronomy 31, verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, the days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep, die. Thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. Oh, yeah. People are going to be whores for the false gods. And go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them. And will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them. That's today, people. And they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day, for all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Church of Satan, people. Do you know the Church of Satan has ministers in the army and in prisons freedom of religion huh right verse 18 and I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought in that they are turned unto other gods now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel, which is what I'm doing now. And teach it to the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that the song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. All right, so here's the song of Moses. I don't know how it goes, and I'm not going to sing, because if you heard me sing, you'd be putting your fingers in your ears. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, that they shall have eaten and filled themselves in wax and fat. Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. I just did the book, um, part of the book of Judges. And that's exactly it. People are impoverished. They cry out to the Lord. He delivers them. They get fat and happy. They turn away from the Lord. Sometimes having too much is a bad thing. Sometimes the Lord's blessings too much is, you know, a bad thing. And it's the people that broke the covenant, not the Lord. So when, when, when people tell you that Israel has a, an everlasting covenant, that's true. But they didn't keep their end of the bargain. They broke it. Verse 21, And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. That's why I'm reading it now. For it shall not be forgotten out of, out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination, 
which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land, which I swear. Moses therefore wrote the song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land, which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, then that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the, in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, why I, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Ooh. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes, and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Ooh, we got to read that again. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. What is today? It's the latter days. Evil will befall you in the latter days because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of the song until they were ended. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>